So up to this point, we've been learning a lot of the traditional material so that you can play the saxophone really well. A lot of the orthodox material that will build the foundation so you can become a great saxophonist. I'd like to step away from that for just one minute or a few minutes of your time and show you some new stuff, some stuff that you might not use right away, but it's lots of fun. It's kind of like the icing on the cake or the embellishments, if you will. We'll call this crazy stuff. Well, so the first thing that I'd like to show you, it's not that crazy, it's actually pretty common. It's something called trilling or trills. So to play a trill, what we do is we play fast between two notes that are right next to each other, from G to A, moving my fingers as fast as I can to make this trill sound. Now that's a great little device embellishment and lots of music requires you to play trills, especially classical music. You'll see trills written in the music. You can do this between any two notes, really, any two notes that are right next to each other. So this works all over the saxophone and is a great little device. The next thing I'd like to show you is our pitch bends. That's when we bend the pitch of the note down or up to give it a little more effect. For example, I'll do it and then I'll explain how I do it. So now what I'm doing, I played the note A. This is a note that you know. And I started to go towards the G with my third finger, but I didn't close the key all the way. I used my fingers to play that pitch bend. I only went halfway down with the key. I didn't press it all the way. And that bends the pitch. And you have to be sure not to close the key all the way. If you do, then you'll get the lower note, and you don't want that. So for example, if I start to close it, we don't want that. We just want halfway down. So that's the sound we want. You can do that between any two notes as well. Now that's nice to use sometimes when you want to play really expressively and you want a different kind of sound. You're bending the pitch so that it's in between the two normal pitches that you're used to. The next thing I'd like to show you, it's called growling. Now this is a device that people used back in the old days, especially in rock and roll music. Saxophone players would growl, gets that kind of aggressive growling sound, really. And some great alto saxophone players did it. Cannonball Adderley did it here and there, sparsely, as well as Charlie Parker. Ben Webster on the tenor saxophone. So let's go and show you how to growl. What you have to do, you literally growl when you play the saxophone. So I just play normal notes, but what I'm going to do is scream with a grisly sound in my throat into the saxophone and make that growling sound so it sounds like this. I'm actually growling with a grisly sound like, ah, in my throat to make that sound. Now that's not the cleanest thing to do if you want a clean sound and a perfect technique. You don't growl, but that's more for when you're really going for it, you're playing rock and roll, and it doesn't have to sound beautiful. It can sound just like a lion or a tiger roaring in the jungle. The last thing I'm going to teach you and this is definitely probably the least orthodox of all the things I'm showing you. Those other things that we just talked about, those are things that a lot of people use and are common. 
This last thing is just going crazy, and you can do that now if you want to. I call it crazy fingers. So what I'm going to do is just move my fingers all around crazy in a crazy way, but I'm going to keep them over the keys, make sure I'm pressing notes, but I'm just going to let them go wherever I feel like going, and I'm going to blow aggressively through the saxophone and get kind of an aggressive style and sound while I just let my fingers go crazy. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.